for to wrap up this week, um, I'm going to take a look at the pixel buffer in the processing. So previously we looked at using the get and set method to access the colors of pixels and to set the colors of pixels in our processing uh, sketches and our images. Um, pixel based operations, if you're doing a lot of them, um, and especially if you're doing a lot of them, say every time the draw method is um, being called, you can imagine that can very quickly become very computationally expensive. It can take a lot of processing power and but slow your sketch down. Um, for, you know, if you think about it, uh, an uh, uh, HD sort of size image, 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels, what, an image that size has more than two million pixels in it, um, and these days that's not a even that's not a particularly large uh, image. Um, so for faster access to pixels. Um, processing uses this thing called the pixel buffer which is really just a big array containing all the pixels and it, it turns out that this is a more efficient way to um, to manipulate uh, pixels if you're doing if you're manipulating a large number of them um, this is a more efficient way uh, to, to do that if you're only changing the value of one or two pixels then sure go ahead and use the get and set methods but if you're changing the value of, sort of every pixel in an image, you'll probably f you will find it more efficient to first of all load the value of all the pixels into the pixel buffer, and then manipulate uh, the pixel buffer, and then call this update pixels method, which sends the updated pixel values across to the graphics card for display. Um, so let's give you a simple example of how that works. Very very simple, in fact, three lines of code. Um, we have here the load pixels method, so that loads the value of all the pixels in the current image um, into uh, the pixel buffer. The pixel buffer is just an array with the name of pixels and it has the number of elements in it that corresponds to the number of uh, pixels in the, the image that uh, we're working with, or the, in this case it's the screen. And what we're doing here is we're just saying, well, element number 24, we're going to change that to be white. So because we're starting with a blank screen, our entire screen will be black. So presumably all the pixel values there in our pixel buffer will be zero. Um, and we're saying, yep, yeah, pixels 24, let's set that to be the color white. And then we call the update pixels method, which actually um, sends the um, our changed pixel buffer across to the graphics card so that we can see it. Um, so let's run that. And mm, you might superficially think nothing has actually happened, but this is our processing screen. All the pixels are uh, not actually black, they're kind of grey by default it looks like. And if we zoom in, we can just see that pixel number 24, which will probably be 23 pixels across from the very top left, uh, that is has been changed white. So in fact our updating of the pixel buffer has worked. So that's showing you the simplest possible example of how the uh, pixel buffer uh, works. Um, so for performance reasons, pix processing pixel buffer is just a one-dimensional array. So you don't get to access the pixel buffer using nice um, sort of x and y coordinates. You've just got one very big long list of uh, numbers um, from the, the value of the very first pixel at the top left of the screen to the value of the last pixel which is down the bottom right of the screen. Um, so for example if you've got a 1920 by 1080 image your pixel buffer is going to be an array from pixel 0 up to pixels 20073599. Um, so, but often, maybe even usually, uh, you want to access a pixel using its x and y value like we've been doing in that nice way with our get and set methods previously. Um, and if you think about it, um, I won't go into this, you can take a look at this slide and nut it out, but basically there's a pretty simple formula that um, if you want to, um, if, you have, if you want to calculate which, what is the value of the um, array index, you need to use to uh, access the value of a pixel with a given x and y coordinate, um, the position is equal to the, the row or the y value times the width of each row 
plus the uh, the x value. So if you apply this formula, you'll be able to find out which array element you need to access to um, either get the color at that particular point or set it to something. Um, and uh, there is an example here, white line. Uh, let's run it so I can remind myself of what it does. Okay, so we have a white line on a black background, but let's see, we're obviously uh, doing it a slightly different way to how we might have done it previously in processing. We have our setup method, sets the size of the screen, sets the background to be black. Then we load the pixel buffer, so we have uh, all the pixels loaded into our pixels array. Uh, and then we're saying uh, we have a for loop and we're counting uh, from x is equal to zero up to the width of the screen. And we're saying the pixel buffer at the coordinate of height divided by two times the width plus x is equal to white. Okay, so in other words, we're going through, we're applying the formula that I just showed you here to uh, to access the pixels in the pixel buffer um, at the coordinates sort of uh, in the middle of the screen for the entire width uh, of the screen. Um, not the most inspiring example ever, but I guess we're just showing you there that this formula uh, is in fact correct and you can use it to do stuff. Um, however, um, so that's great, um, but for many operations uh, on images, you don't actually need to worry about X and Y coordinates. For example, if you just want to change the brightness of an entire image, or you want to make some color change that makes the whole, a whole image a lot, uh, I don't know, pinker or a lot more red or something like that, you're not actually worried often about what about the coordinates of individual pixels. You just want to work your way through the entire collection of pixels and apply some formula to them to make them look different. And I've got some example sketches um, of where you would do that. Uh, let's find black white. So this image is using the uh, sample image, the original image, the source image we used before. This one here. And uh, we're loading in an image uh, from disk, as we've done in previous examples. Then we're drawing that image onto the screen. We're then calling load pixels to load in the value, uh, to load in, to create our pixel buffer array and fill it with the uh, values of all the pixels in our image. And then we've got a for loop which does nothing except count through all the pixels in the image. So starting with the pixel, pixel number zero, all the way through to pixel number, whatever it is that um, uh, what is that is the last pixel. We're getting the value of the pixel at uh, each one of those points, and then we're changing the value of the pixel. We're applying some a formula to it. So we're saying, okay, well the value of the red component of that pixel color, we're going to multiply that by 0.299, we're going to multiply the green component by 0.587, and we're going to make the, multiply the blue component by 0.114. Now it turns out this is a kind of a, a, a set of numbers, a sort of a set of ratios we can apply to convert a, a pixel from a color that uh, color that we perceive as uh, to convert it from a color to a, to a black and white to a shade of gray. Um, so we're, what we're doing here is converting, applying a little formula that converts the color of each pixel one at a time to its equivalent sort of shade of grey. Um, so let's run it and see how that works and you can see that it does indeed do the trick. And of course you could um, mess around with different values here. Um, 
to get different kinds of effects and mess around and see if uh, you know until you, and play with these values until you get uh, an effect that you like depending on what you're looking for so again a quite a simple example just showing you that when you when you access the pixels if you want to change the value of those pixels you can do that based on whatever algorithm you like and there is a whole bunch of algorithms you can apply uh, to get all kinds of different effects um, black and white 2 that's another example Ah yes, so I was, for the moment there I blanked on why on earth I had this example because it seems to do exactly the same thing as the previous one um, and indeed it does but it does it in slightly a slightly different way um, and what I wanted to show you is that previously we've loaded the pixel buffer let's bring up the previous example again we've loaded the pixel buffer and if we just call load pixels uh, like so it gives it creates the pixels array for us for the entire processing window so we have the pixels array will be filled with the value of all the pixels in the current processing window and that's fine um, if we want to change the color of uh, you know every pixel in the window but it might be the case that we only want to change the value of um, the pixels in a particular image. So we might actually in our processing sketch be showing three or four or five or ten or a thousand uh, individual images. We might want to just access the pixel buffer for one of those images and change that image to be black and white or, or apply whatever effect we want to it. So we can also get access to the pixel buffer for an individual image and that's what we're doing in this black and white 2 example everything is almost the same as before except instead of calling the load pixels method on its own we're calling image.loadpixels so this is just creating a pixel buffer for this particular image particular p image that we've loaded and then that creates for us a pixels array which is attached to the image object for that particular picture um, so yes, this sketch does exactly the same as the previous one, but it's accessing the pixel buffer for an individual image. And as I said, that's important because we could easily say have three or four or five or six different images that we want to work with, and we might want to treat them all it's with in slightly different ways. We might want to tint one of them black and white. We might want to change one to be sepia. We might want to change mess, make one be a, look like a photographic negative. Stuff like this. Um, and um, by using these individual pixel buffers for each image we can do that um, the final example actually is doing some sepia toning so sepia toning is kind of a uh, an old well, it's a it's a technique that was used in sort of an old-fashioned photographs to give them uh, to give photographs a particular tint, and if you want to make a photograph look old-fashioned-y, oldy-worldy, um, this is um, a technique you might want to use. So we have our uh, example image from before, which we're loading in. Oops. and really we're doing a, a very similar thing to before but we're applying a different algorithm we're loading in an image and we're loading in the pixel buffer for the for that well for the whole screen we're displaying it on the screen then we're loading the pixel buffer we've got a for loop that works its way through all the pixels we get the color of each of the pixels one at a time and then we apply a formula which um, creates this sepia this old old-fashioned photo effect um, and setting the pixels in the target image to be uh, the result of that formula to be that sort of old-fashioned tinted look 
So, and then we're of course calling update pixels to tell processing to make sure that um, it sends those updated pixels across to the graphics card so that we can see them. Um, so when we run this, you see we have the original image transformed into this uh, sepia toned image. So really it's, it's no different conceptually to what we were doing before with the black and white image. We're really just applying slightly different formulas to the red, green and blue values of each one of those pixels. Um, and next week we're going to be looking at a whole lot of different algorithms that you can use um, f uh, in, uh, in image processing uh, to get a, a much wider range of effects. Um, so hopefully after these little short series of videos you ha now understand the concept of what a bitmap image is that it's just a big collection of pixels, um, a big collection of numbers that describes the color of each individual pixel element in an image. Hopefully you're able to uh, load, display and manipulate images in processing. You're able to access individual pixel values and set individual pixel values. And hopefully you have an understanding of arrays and um, the pixel buffer and how you can use the pixel buffer to manipulate um, the values in of the pixel values in, in images and on the processing screen. So that's it. In the lab you will be um, doing some exercises to practice these skills and get a sense of how you might, um, might like to use them um, potentially for your, for your projects as well.